Hello and welcome you guys. I hope you guys are all doing really well. Um, I just wanted to talk about a few things that I like to do in the garden in middle of October. So mid fall, early fall, these are kind of things to keep the garden all tidy. I got my trusty shears here and I just really wanted to show you guys something else. Just a sec. So right here I found uh, this beautiful leaf. This here is liquid amber styrosiflua or the sweet gum tree. It came from the top of my tree right back there. It's just finally starting to turn color for the fall. And I just really wanted to show you guys how beautiful that venation is there. It's quite striking. Yeah, so that's just kind of a big hallmark um, characteristic of the fall where I live at the 49th parallel. So that's my latitude. Now, so a few things I really wanted to talk about, and I'm going to be mainly talking about established perennials as well as many ornamental plants. So this is kind of a time in the year where a lot of your plants start adopting this kind of scraggly, haphazard look to them, uh, simply because they're entering their next growth cycle, which will, or their next cycle of maturation, which is dormancy. So as you guys know, a lot of plants will actually go dormant to preserve and conserve energy uh, throughout the colder winter months. So here in the Northern Hemisphere, that is around November, December, January, February. It's more like June, July, and August in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah. So I just really wanted to talk about a few things to keep tidy. Uh, if you have lots of broadleaf um, deciduous bushes, such as lilacs, here I have a bridal white lilac. Uh, you just want to clear out some of the detritus material, some of the leaves that have died back. But with plants of this nature, you really want to make sure that you don't do a heavy prune like you would in the summer, because a big problem that a lot of people have with their shrubs is they'll prune them back really hard right before the winter and it leaves them quite exposed and then you get a whole lot of internal rot issues with that buildup of late season moisture. So if you see buds like these, these over here are uh, the terminal buds. These over here will produce your blooms for you for the next season. You want to try to preserve those on many um, spring blooming bushes. So this includes your broadleaf azaleas, this includes um, your lilacs, your um, panicle hydrangeas and things like that. So another thing I really wanted to mention was more about the foliage plants is large leaf um, herbaceous perennial plants like hostas. So this is the time of the year where I really like to clean them up because they become a whole lot more uh, susceptible to internal rot and pest issues with this canopy here because a lot of things like to hide in here. Uh, namely slugs, you get lots of um, earwigs and silverfish fish and just really gross things like that. So what I do is I like to locate the very uh, origin of the stem where it started to deplete a little bit, make a clean cut, remove it, including the whole stem and petiole, and then you'll be left with a mound of foliage that's only a couple of inches above the soil surface. Now at this point here I recommend doing a little bit of mulch. I usually mulch with a little bit of um, really fibrous bark mulch. It just preserves it over the season. Uh, you can let them die down naturally as well, but if you want a more tidy aesthetic before like the Christmas season or before Halloween or what have you, uh, it's just nice to tidy it up. I highly recommend that you let a whole lot of the bulk material go yellow because as it's green it's still photosynthesizing and it still produces a lot of energy for the plant to regenerate next season. Okay, what should I talk about now? Oh yes, so many ornamental perennials will actually bloom all the way throughout the uh, summer months. This includes lots of Achilleas or Yarrows. Um, this includes a whole lot of your, um, your early blooming asters. Uh, it includes a lot of zonal geraniums, those kinds of more tenoral, tender uh, perennials. It also includes your daylilies, and it includes um, a lot of your perennial geraniums as well, like the uh, mounding geraniums and a lot of cone flowers. So what I do is I like to clean them up because a lot of time you don't want them to go to seed because this just extinguishes a lot of their energy that they have for next year. I cut the stalks, even if they have uh, seed material that's ripened on them right to the base and then create this more mound form like I have here. Um, a lot of people have problems with uh, the plant not blooming and regenerating the next year very efficiently and it's because at this time of the year they haven't pruned it back 
and that plant took all of its effort going into seed and because of that it doesn't have enough energy stored over to be able to persist into the next season and as a result of that it also loses a lot of longevity. So now another thing I really wanted to mention is deadheading in your more tender plants. So right over here I have my seed geraniums. This is more of an annual biennial type plant. Um, very tender. Wanna really... Oh, there's a... I don't know what's going on, but there's sirens behind me just a sec. Don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> but anyways, this is more of a tender plant. Doesn't tend to fare very well in extremely cold situations. You want to protect it a little bit. But I like to reduce the uh, the blooming stem or the petiole of the bloom right at an internode and it usually snaps for you if it's ready. This one over here is ready. I don't know if you can see it did that snap because many of them have a little bit of botrytis forming on them which is this fuzzy grayish stuff and that's just detrimental to the plant. It's not very healthy practice for the plant and it, crea it can create a whole host of mold and rot problems for you and your plants. So for that reason I really like to just manually with my hand uh, go in and deadhead a lot of my spent blooms. Uh, you'll find that you actually get a whole lot of secondary blooms uh, coming up and if you're early enough you can get a really nice flush of blooms in October. If you're a little bit too late then the frost will come by and just completely kill these off and then you'll lose that intervention. Now if you really want to reproduce plants from seeds by all means keep them on but make sure that they haven't gone all detritus and brown like this. Uh, you're not going to get any viable seeds off of that. So just another thing I really want to talk about um, is making reduction cuts and pruning several different species around this time of autumn. So there are some plants that definitely have a little bit of dieback such as the salix or willow. I'm gonna cut this down about halfway really hard and have it regenerate from the top. Plants like this that have a more finer texture to them, and by that I mean a very thin, uh, mature stem, tend to respond a lot better to a hard shearing back at this time of the year, and it gives them a whole lot of uh, adventitious growing points where they can really branch out next year and you're not going to be left with a huge ass like stem of a tree. This works really well with Wigela, it works really well with many other flowering plants, quinces, as well as forsythia. And it actually works really well for a whole host of different berry producing bushes like gooseberries and josta berries and currants. They like to be a little bit pruned back at this time of the year before it gets way too cold because um, then you deal with that internal rot issue. So another thing I really wanted to say about this time and just general garden maintenance in the fall is you want to pick out species that have unfortunately not made it through the season. This is very common, a lot of them will get quite uh, extinguished, they just for whatever reason haven't made it through the season, maybe improper watering or something like that. And then just locate them in the garden and thin them out and replace or try a new variety. Because many times um, these varieties will not come back for you as they've been completely extinguished. I can't find any examples now because I think I've been pretty keen on making sure everything thrives, but it's just another thing to mention. Another thing I will mention is your more annual crops, such as beans. I have beans right over here, um, pole beans. You want to make sure that you start harvesting your seed because pretty soon these um, seed pods that have been dried out will 